Hi guys, Miss Francis here. Last time we talked about neurons. Today I'd like to talk about the nerve impulse that travels down the axon of the neuron. If you've ever seen an EKG, an EKG actually measures action potentials. So today I'd like to take a look at what actually happens and the graph associated with what happens. So if we look at this first graph, you'll note that um, this is what's called our resting membrane potential, where the resting membrane potential has a value of negative 70 millivolts, where inside my cell, I'm going to have a negative charge, and outside of my cell, I'll find a positive charge. However, along comes some sort of stimulus, and now I need to send a message to a muscle, for example, to have some sort of response. So now depolarization takes place. My sodium via sodium ion channels travels into my cell, flip-flopping the charge. So now inside my cell is positive and outside of my cell is negative. So this occurs via facilitated diffusion since it requires um, a membrane protein. And we call this depolarization. But wait a second. I need to repolarize my neuron. I need to get back to that resting potential. So what happens is called repolarization, where sodium, I'm sorry, where potassium ion channels open, and now potassium moves out of the cell, returning the inside of the cell to that negative um, charge that it wants to have in its resting membrane potential. So that's called a repolarization. So what's causing the change in the membrane potential seen around letters A, B, C, and D in the graph? It's the movement of those sodium and potassium ions, where after the period labeled D, you have your refractory period, and during this time the neuron can't send another message because it's during this time that the sodium potassium pump is working to restore that resting membrane potential. So let's get a little bit more detailed about the graph and what's happening. The first part of the graph that I'd like to evaluate in further detail is part A, the resting potential. So at resting potential, we have a charge of negative 70 millivolts. In other words, if I were to hook up an oscilloscope to measure, or a voltmeter, to measure the charge across the membrane, it would read negative 70 millivolts. In this state, the cell is called polarized, and this resting membrane potential is established by that sodium-potassium pump. Now let's look at section E. What do you think section E is? Section E is some sort of stimulus that's going to cause the cell to be disturbed. So the stimulus disturbs the cell membrane of the dendrite, and now my sodium channels begin to open. A threshold is released. The threshold is the minimum voltage needed to continue the action potential. That threshold is negative 55 millivolts. Once that threshold is reached, more sodium ions, I'm sorry, more, yeah, more sodium ions begin to pass through more sodium ion channels that start to open. I have to reach that threshold, though, in order for the action potential to continue traveling down the axon. If I don't reach this threshold, nothing happens. There's just no response. So now let's check out what happens during depolarization in greater detail. So section B represents the opening of the sodium channels. So here I have the exterior of the cell, here I have the interior of the cell. I've got my open sodium channels and the sodium enters my cell, making the inside more positive. That's not how we want it. Normally, we want it the opposite. We want the interior to be negative and the exterior to be positive. But now I'm heading 
towards a positive interior in my cell. The next part is repolarization. I want to return back to my resting potential. I want to return back to that negative 70 millivolt. Sorry, millivolts. So in order for that to happen, the potassium channels open and now my sodium channels close. So here's the inside of the cell, here's the outside of the cell. My um, potassium channel opens and now my potassium moves out of the cell, restoring the negative charge inside and the positive charge outside of the cell. This is called re- polarization because I'm trying to return to that polarized state, right? That membrane, I'm sorry, that resting membrane potential. But oops, I've overshot my resting membrane potential. That's called hyperpolarization where I've let too much potassium outside of my soul, outside of my cell. So this is called um, hyperpolarization. And what happens is a refractory period where the sodium potassium pump works to restore that membrane potential. And during this time, that neuron cannot respond. A, another impulse cannot be sent down the axon, nor can the neuron respond to an incoming um, impulse. So here's a nice little summary chart that shows your cell in its resting state at negative 70 millivolts. That shows what happens to the cell during depolarization where our sodium ion channels open and our sodium moves into the cell, thus causing the inside of the cell to head towards a less negative number eventually to a positive number. So now inside the cell, I'm positive, and outside of the cell, I have a negative charge. Then my cell needs to repolarize itself. So my sodium ion channels close, and my potassium ions, ions move out through open potassium ion channels. And now I restore my membrane potential I get that negative charge back inside and a positive charge outside until I reach my resting state. Within the resting state, though, remember, I have that overshoot. That's not shown in these um, images, but the refractory period happens during the overshoot. So if an axon is myelinated, the action potential or the impulse moves down the axon even faster because it's able to leap from node to node to node. Remember those nodes of Ranvier? So instead of having to travel all through the axon, it can eliminate parts of the axon and just jump down it. The body distinguishes between a strong outside stimulus and a weak one by the frequency of the action potentials. So that's our discussion of action potentials for today.